Hello, hello. Oh my god. Can you fucking sit? Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and for being here today. You wanna say hi? No, not yet. Also, this part of my bang has been pissing me off all morning. Yeah, that's what you get when you cut your own bangs with sewing scissors, you dumb bitch. Okay, so for today, I'm doing something a little bit different for my channel. I did something a little bit different on my last video as well when I did like the declutter, but I've been seeing this trend going on YouTube for quite a while and I'm absolutely obsessed absolutely obsessed with watching them so i wanted to do one as well and as you can tell from the title of this video that is going over my worst purchases of my 20s um i am going to be doing a bit different i'm going to go over my worst and then kind of end on a positive note and go over my best for those of you who don't know i am 26 so my 20s aren't done but i feel like i am through the roughest part of my 20s where the most reckless spending is all right so right off the bat like i said i've watched quite a few of these and a lot of them are a lot more severe than mine i'm very lucky because my mom is really good with money so Growing up, like especially in my early 20s, my teens, like she always kind of kept me in check with my spending. Uh, there are a lot of videos I've watched where like kids or like people in their young 20s made purchases that my mom would never fucking let me do. She'd be like, are you fucked? So a shout out to my mom who's watching this, Denise. I love you, mom. Thank you for making sure I'm not in debt. Say hello, say hello. Hi everyone, I had a shower today and now I smell like a wet dog. I think it's important to talk openly about finances when it's in direct contrast to like what has seems to have become the norm for social media like influencers and what i mean by that is there are a lot of very young people you know in their late teens early 20s who are kind of embracing this flex culture and i'm just gonna be completely honest i do not like flex culture i don't like you know flexing all the expensive stuff you have i think it further perpetuates the cost divide and i think it really disproportionately affects low-income people but that is a discussion for another day. But the reason why I'm talking about it is because I think it's very important to not let that culture influence how you spend your money at home. It is very, very, very rare in the real world to be a millionaire in your 20s. However, on social media, it seems that we are overly saturated with people with just lots of lots of money. And I'm not talking shit about them, like good for them. I just think that constantly being bombarded with these lifestyles is not the healthiest way um, to view ourselves because we start comparing ourselves, we start feeling bad about ourselves. When I was in my early 20s, I was in school. I did not have a pot to fucking piss in. I was broke as shit. I remember having to call my mom asking for money so I could eat. So if you're in that stage of life, or even if that's where you are now at my age or even older, just try not to compare yourself to people who just got lucky because that really is what it is. Of course, a lot of people have worked hard, but when it comes to internet fame, I guess. Um, there are just people who got lucky and that's truly how I feel about myself. There are thousands and thousands, millions of people who have lost massive amounts of weight. Um, so I feel very lucky to be in this position, but I just wanted to remind you guys of that. All right. So finally on to the worst purchases I've made in my twenties. Um, like I said, I will follow with the best purchases I've made, but let's get to the worst because God knows I've made some dumb fucking purchases. So my first dumb purchase or purchases I made in my twenties is 100% makeup products so a few years ago i was super super into makeup and i feel like that's not uncommon when like beauty gurus and the makeup community on youtube started booming i feel like a lot of us went to the stores and bought a bunch of shit we didn't need i was bad like bad 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 during like my early 20s i thought i needed to own every single makeup product there was if a beauty guru mentioned an eyeshadow palette i needed it Lipstick, I needed it. Anything, I needed it. If it was like the talk of the town, I thought I needed it. And don't get me wrong, like I still spend money on makeup, but it has obviously shifted. So now, you know, maybe I'll buy like one palette a year. The majority of my money goes to repurchasing things that I use every day, like foundation, concealer, pressed powder, all of those types of things. Um, but when I was younger, I swear to God, I owned every single MAC lipstick, which, and the sad thing is, makeup expires so all that money those thousands and thousands of dollars i put into buying makeup it's now in the trash because it all expired and it all got nasty so yeah that's definitely my first bad purchase i made when i say i spent thousands of dollars i spent thousands of dollars i had like eight billion eyeshadow palettes i had like i said every lipstick under the sun I had like eight highlighters. Who needs eight highlighters? And again, I think that just comes back down to YouTube culture and um, being constantly exposed to people who have all that stuff and kind of forgetting that those people were sent all that stuff for free and they didn't spend thousands of dollars. <laughs> okay, so number two, and this one's kind of sad to talk about. It's kind of depressing. Um, but if you've been on my channel before, you know my history with body dysmorphia. So the second uh, bad purchase or purchases I've made in my 20s is on plastic surgery consultations. 
Yes, consultations to alter my body. So obviously this is heavily influenced. Hey, no biting. Obviously this is heavily influenced by uh, the dysmorphia that came after my massive weight loss. Um, but I went through a time where, you know, I thought I had to change every single part of my body. And it got to the point where I actually went for consultations for these things. And if you didn't know, most plastic surgeons charge you for a consultation. And in Toronto, it's not cheap. It's about $200 to $250 just to talk to them for 10 minutes about what you want to change. And I did that a lot. I don't even like admitting it, but it's the truth. Um, I mentioned before my channel, I went for my face. I was going through a little bit of dysmorphia and thought my face was super round and I needed to get it lipoed or a facelift. Just have the doctor tell me I didn't need it. That's the thing, I'm very lucky that all the surgeons I went to basically told me that I'm being stupid and <laughs> irrational. Otherwise, I probably would have spent a lot more money on the actual surgeries. I went for a Brazilian butt lift, which again, heavily influenced by social media, I know. So I spent, you know, all that money to have that consultation for them to basically tell me, you can't get that because you don't have enough fat in your stomach and if I wanted to get it done, I'd have to gain weight. And listen, you don't tell someone who's lost 140 pounds to purposely gain weight because it's not gonna fucking happen. I've gone for my back skin, which to be fair, I still kind of want my back skin removed. You are such a crazy puppy. I still kind of want my back skin removed because it does, you know, affect my everyday life. But um, yeah, I went for different injections. I've gone for a bunch of different things that I didn't end up following through with. Leo, you're distracting everyone. You are distracting everyone. <laughs> okay, so number three, the third worst purchase I made in my 20s, which again, it is purchases, and that is, who wants to guess? Binge eating food. So if this is your first video of mine, you may not know that around 22, 23, 24, I had a raging binge eating disorder, and I drained a lot of money into that. Like a lot, a lot, a lot. I never binged on broccoli in my freezer, you know? It was always on baked goods from bakeries, so already expensive. Um, my favorite meals from restaurants, so expensive. And uh, basically a bunch of things that don't come with a cheap price tag. Um, at the height of my binge eating, I would say I was binging like every other day and on those days like i was i was within the philosophy of if i'm gonna binge i'm gonna make it good because you know i was super disordered so i was basically spending between 50 and 60 dollars a day when i was binging because i would go to my favorite restaurant i would go to bakeries i wouldn't get one thing i would get a bunch of stuff and that money definitely added up i struggled really bad with binge eating for like a year and a half so if i were to calculate how much money i spent on like food i would probably shit myself like really bad. So the fourth purchase I've made that isn't very smart. Uh, that is basically YouTube stuff. <laughs> YouTube stuff I thought I needed that I didn't. The best example of this is the drone I bought. Um, you know, you buy a thousand dollar drone, over a thousand dollar drone, and then I used it once. And I didn't even use it, Zach used it. And then I used the footage he got. Another thing, I had convinced myself I needed the iPhone XS because it was supposed to be so much better than the iPhone 8 that I had at the time. Um, I ended up buying it out you know, full price, and then I ended up hating it. So then I ended up giving it to my mom and buying a new one, the iPhone 11, you know, Pro Max or whatever. What else? Oh, all my professional lighting that I have that I never use. My camera, I'm filming on my phone right now, so. So that kind of ties into the fifth one, and that's just like, I'm a very bad impulse buyer, and I'm trying to get better at it. And it's not like my best quality, but maybe someone out there can relate. Like when I decide I want something, I just buy it. Like not much thought goes into it which like i said i'm trying to get better and i'm trying to implement the rule of like wait a week wait a couple weeks and then like if you still want it buy it but like you know put some time in it um because i end up just buying a bunch of stuff i don't ever use especially when it comes to like clothes oh my god my hobbies i have an obsessive personality i think like i'm that person who becomes super super obsessed with like a new thing and i'm obsessed with it constantly and like i'm so obsessed with it in the moment for like a couple weeks and then after a couple weeks I get sick of it and I never look at it again. I've done that with so many art things, sculpting, painting, crochet. <laughs> and like, of course I don't wait to see if I still like it in two weeks. Like the second I decide I'm obsessed with it, I'm like, I'm gonna buy fucking everything I need for it. So that is definitely something I've been trying to improve on is just impulse buying in general, especially with clothes because this is super embarrassing to admit, but like if I buy clothes and they don't work, I'm too lazy to send them back. And like, I throw them in my pile that's just over there and I'm like, I'll just sell it. Well, I've been saying I was gonna sell it for like two years now and I still haven't got around to that. All right, so on to the best purchases to kind of end this video on a positive note. 
Uh, the first one, hands down, is my education. If you didn't know, I did a lot of school, a lot of university. I did six years, which equated to one bachelor's degree and two master's degrees. Obviously, that was not cheap, just so you know, I am Canadian, so my tuition in general is a lot cheaper than, say, uh, the United States. Still, it wasn't cheap. I was lucky in the sense that both my master's degrees, I received a lot of funding to cover like the tuition and a lot of the living expenses just based on my grades on in undergrad. But nonetheless, it was 100% the best decision of my life. I cannot express how much my education has shaped me as a person, how much it has taught me about the world, about other people, about my social skills, about what I'm good at. It set me up to be interested in things that I find to be very important, like world events, world politics. It gave me a ton of transferable skills that I can use in all aspects of life. I met a lot of my best friends in school, people who, you know, share the same ethics, the same ideologies as me. Um, and yeah, I honestly just think it has made me a better person. I would 100% redo school 8,000 times. Uh, and I just love school. Like, I, I love school. I want to go back. I want a PhD. All right, so the second best purchase I made in my 20s, and that is my loose skin removal surgery. So again, if you're new here, I had my loose skin removed after my uh, massive weight loss, and it was 100% one of the best decisions I have made. It has made me feel so much more confident in myself. Obviously, I still have loose skin all over my body, but I feel like my breasts and my stomach were like the main issues I had. Um, I still have insecurities, of course, but overall, it was such a good purchase for me because it just made me, it made me feel... I don't know, it just made me feel better. Okay, so the third best purchase I have made in my 20s is definitely the resources that I've utilized for my mental health. So what I mean by this is my therapy and my medication. If you're someone who struggles with any mental health issue, anxiety, depression, whatever, I cannot recommend therapy enough and investing in therapy. It can be super expensive. I actually do mine online. I do mine through BetterHelp uh, because it just matches my lifestyle a bit more. And I also like how I can constantly like text my therapist be like what up <laughs> i'm depressed today but yeah therapy has drastically improved my life and i think therapy is something we need to openly talk about more and openly encourage i honestly think every single person should be in therapy um even if you think your life is perfect go in therapy so that when shit hits the fan you have the coping mechanisms to deal with that all right so the final purchase i made in my 20s that i do not regret and i think has you know, molded who I am today is anything that has to do with travel. I am such an advocate of traveling out of your comfort zone, out of your norm. So when I was in university, I did a little bit of um, research on Asia. And last year, Zach and I went to Bali. And I'm telling you, the like 10 days we spent in Bali taught me so much more than a semester of school did about Bali. You know what I mean? Like just seeing something, experiencing something, meeting people, it's such a valuable thing to do in life. But yeah, guys, so that's basically it. I will mention that I think a very important and very valuable purchase to make in your 20s is property if you can afford it. I haven't bought property yet, but that is definitely on my to-do list. I'm just, I don't know where I'm gonna be living and I'm just in a very unique situation in that way. The second you buy property, you are building equity, you are building passive income, possibly, if you decide to move out of that house and rent it out um it's just it's just a good idea to buy property but yeah guys that is it thank you so much for watching if you're new here please remember to subscribe if you like my content um and as always please remember to like because it helps my videos and please comment because i would love to read all about your guys' experiences with finances and yeah bye do you want to say bye leo bye say bye bye hmm? say bye bye he's so fucking curly because he just had a bath all right bye